Welcome to episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me today. So, the last day of the pool stages is done. We are done with the groups. And uh, some of it's pretty what we expected. Others was an amazing game. And just, yes, the last day of the group stages did not disappoint. I know the Typhoon affected some of the games. But let's get into it. Please subscribe, share, and comment down below on anything you feel, how, the, uh, how you feel this day went. What results, are you happy with how it went, turned out? Let's get into the discussions down below. So, first things first, obviously Namibia, Canada game. Cancelled. That's really sad. It is unfortunate. It feels like again World Rugby treating some of the smaller nations with a little bit of discontent and just not giving them time to play. I'm sure that both of these teams, this is the game they were focusing on. So yeah, uh, that's unfortunate and really really sad to see. But didn't play out to the, the result of World Cup, so I guess it makes sense. And obviously, as they've been saying, World, as World Rugby's been saying, safety is the number one concern. So they felt that they needed to do this. Um, looking at how the fields look everywhere else, it's odd, but I guess we can't argue with the experts. Yeah, so let's get into the first game that I actually played today, the USA Tonga game. I wasn't able to watch the full game, so um, I just got from from what I saw, the biggest thing it was definitely a tighter contest in the first half. Uh, USA actually uh, Tonga taking first blood, but USA taking the lead after two more tries. It was a, a good game, a lot of good moments, but fact of the matter is that Tonga just ran them riot. Once the USA defense fell apart and their forward pack just weren't able to control it, the the USA defense is definitely something that. Hurt them, missing double the amount of tackles of the Tongans. Oh, it wasn't a mass bad tackle, of, uh, it was about 70%, 70%. I mean, they only had to make 140. But still, uh, missing double the amount of tackles, effectively the same tackle, uh, that just doesn't help. And the Tongans were just able to run through them when needed. So, credit to Tonga, nice victory, well deserved after that French game, and I think it was really, really strong. USA, in my opinion, the most disappointing team of this World Cup. Just not able to deliver from what their sevens can do and what they actually have resource-wise to be able to pull it off. Um, something they'll definitely have to look at going into next World Cup if they can make it. But yeah, we will see. Um, it was, other than that, not, nothing much to write home right, about. It was definitely one of the, the, the least interesting game of the, of the day, but still, well done to Tonga. Next up, Wales-Uruguay. What a game by Uruguay. Really the pluckiest of minnows in this tournament. Everybody wrote them off, I wrote them off, and I am wrong. Wow. Taking on Fiji and really taking on Wales for 60 minutes. I mean, I wouldn't say half time, 60 minutes. They were in it, and they even scored a try with a man down. Really, really, really good performance. The only yellow card of the day, which is really nice to see also. Um, it's, as I said, 7-6 at half time. Wales did open up the try the, with a good try. But later, just Uruguay con kicking themselves into seven, uh, to six points. It was a consistent performance, but Wales definitely did start burying them down. Uh, Uruguay was a little bit cynical on slowing the ball down, and to be fair, it worked for them until they got a yellow card. And they even got a, got a try with that. Something that Wales needs to look at here, hugely going into the quarterfinals as they make the top of that little quarterfinal, as the top of their pool, is when they're playing against France, France, in my opinion, they're lucky to be facing them, uh, but still... When they're playing against France, they need to improve their attack. Their defense was outstanding. 90% defense, 90% um, uh, tackle rate, really, really good. Really good. And I mean, fine, they didn't have to make many tackles, but the tackles they needed to make, they made. And considering the fluidity of that Uruguayan attack, it was impressive. But on the other hand, when it comes to their attack, I felt they kept on dropping the ball. It was very disconnected. And I know this isn't the top strength Wales team. I get it. Um, but still, it was, there were still some stars in that. I mean, you still have the Davies's. You still have uh, Halfpenny, all of those are still there, and Halfpenny also didn't kick amazingly, but such as that. The biggest thing here is just so many misplaced tackled passes, passes behind players, forward passes, passes above players, uh, pass players getting the pass in the perfect place and then dropping it. So that was probably the biggest notice of this game, it was just not continuity. They kept, they couldn't pull past a couple phases, giving Uruguay a chance to play here, and Uruguay definitely did. Um, credit, as I said again, to Wales' defence, but this is something that the, the, the Welsh need to look at. Uh, when they got into attacking mode, they were strong, but they just could not string together a couple of phases. It was often something that went wrong. The other thing that was very impressive with Uruguay is the turnovers. Wales must check out this, as they were definitely giving away many, many, many uh, turnovers in this game. Uruguay, in Wales' defence, though, is the top turning over team of the tournament, very impressively. Uh, another great amount of turnovers in this game. Really, really annoying the team on the ground. Sometimes, yes, they were a little bit questionable, leading to a yellow card, but for the large part, some stunning ones that Uruguay can take home and really be impressed by. What a team. Wales, on the other hand, need to look forward into, uh, to the French game. 
a big one. I think they might have the easiest semi-final, but to be fair, never underestimate the French in the knockout stages. Hashtag New Zealand. So we'll see how it goes. Coming into the last game, the Japan-Scotland game, the humding of the day. What a game. Wow. Literally pace for days. Both teams running riot, really giving good ones. It was just beautiful. Scotland opened up with a half, with a, with a actual with a uh, Russell try, really really good, and it looked like there at that point Scotland were going to take it. They were they were looking stronger, and then all of a sudden Japan just changed gears, holding the ball. I mean the set half, uh, the, the, holding the ball and scoring three outrageous tries, like stupid tries. Even New Zealand, Bowden Barrett looked at that and was like, how how did you do that? And I mean that is exactly how it was. It was just impressive. Uh, Handling, uh, moves, kicking, tactically impressive, really beautiful tries. Tries that would make any rugby fan just gawk. So credit to the Japanese in that. One thing that was very interesting is that they definitely kept the ball away from the, the Scottish for large periods of time, helping to that. And it was very, very patient. The, the, Scot the Japanese attack is, can only be described as an exceptionally patient attack. At some points, even commentators moaning that they'd been spending 10 to 15 minutes between the 10 meters. And they did. I mean, they were just sitting there, going back and forth. And then out of nowhere, strike, try. So, I don't think you can discount that. That patient, don't, don't underestimate that patience for inability to go forward. It's calculated. It is exceptionally well calculated and credit to that Japanese. They were really, really strong in being able to get, find the holes, play, hold the ball until they found the hole and really put the defense out of position. So I just think that, that was in incredible to see. Some beautiful inside passes also, keeping the rush defense guessing. The second half on the other hand was definitely a lot more Scotland Scott getting two tries to give themselves back into the game, but Japan, Japan just held off for the last 20 minutes really well and their defense quality showed again like it did in the Irish game. Both teams had strong defenses with effectively about 80 to percent tackle, but Scotland having to make substantially more uh, due to the first half. The second half was very even and even due to that with 75-25 the first half it ended up being about 50-50 second half just showing how much Scotland did come back into the game and a lot of credit they definitely can do that and have showcased that and credit to the Scottish this is not a game where you can sit down. Our, our Japan were just that good. Scotland had some quality tries some good moves and definitely kept them guessing but just could not Qual that that pride and that machine of clinical attack. The handling in this game was insane from Japan. Only dropping three balls in the first half after so much possession is just incredible. So really credit to Japan. As South African, I am a little bit more nervous facing them now. I have to admit that. But we will see how it goes. I will be bringing out a video breaking down the quarterfinals, how I feel, the teams, all of that good stuff. So please watch out for it. Comment down below. Please share, subscribe, and all those good things. And let me know how you felt about these games, guys. Thanks. Bye.